Taiwan entered this uh, year 2012 uh, with a lively uh, display of our country's political uh, freedoms. On January uh, 14th, uh, millions of Taiwanese citizens cast their votes in our country's fifth popular presidential election, bringing to an end an intense political campaign uh, season. Uh, when the political dust in Taiwan settled, uh, President Ma in Zhou was re-elected uh, with 52% uh, uh, of the votes and 6% more than the votes gained by the opposition candidate, uh, Tsai Ing-wen. After the election, uh, President Obama congratulated President Ma and told him that, quote, in this year's elections, Taiwan has again demonstrated the strength and vitality of its democratic system, end quote. Ambassador Ray Bernhardt, chairman of the American Institute in Taiwan, uh, concluded in late January when he visited Taipei that he said this election demonstrated the maturity of Taiwan's democracy. So I'm therefore proud to say that with our fifth presidential election and two peaceful uh, transitions of power already behind us. The resilience of Taiwan's democracy is without question. Taiwan's electoral process truly displayed a vibrant democracy in action. Uh, today, with the help of technology, Chinese citizens on the mainland are taking note. While every election is unique, I believe that this one may end up playing a trans transformative role not only for Taiwan, but for mainland China as well. Uh, Taiwan's soft power has never been stronger, and this election, peaceful, orderly, mundane, even, was watched from across the Taiwan Strait with great curiosity and anticipation. Uh, one contributor to a mainland microblog put it beautifully, saying that, quote, on the other side of the sea, Taiwan erected a mirror. And on this side of the sea, we saw ours in the future, end quote. So four years ago, President George W. Bush called Taiwan, quote, a beacon of democracy to Asia and the world, end quote. This beacon is quickly becoming an engine of change. I firmly believe that through both our elections and the daily operations of our representative democracy, Taiwan will continue to serve as a catalyst and a facilitator for expanding freedom and democracy to mainland China. There is a famous quote from Mahama Gandhi that I like a lot. He said, be the change you want to see. In Taiwan, through our open society, our progressive culture, and our boisterous democratic process, we put this principle into action. Leading by example, we hope to make a fully democratic Asian continent a reality. As a security guarantor for the world, the United States has a strong interest in maintaining peace and stability from the Persian Gulf to the Taiwan Strait. It is understandable then that our previous administration's so-called scorch earth diplomacy unnecessarily elevated tensions 
in the Taiwan Strait and damaged our bilateral relations with our closest ally, the United States. When President Ma assumed pres presidency in May year 2008, he put forward a vision that sought to reverse a stagnant and increasingly dangerous situation in the Taiwan Strait. President Ma's grand strategy revolved around several interdependent tracks, addressing Taiwan's bilateral relationship with men in China through gradual conciliation, depending ties with the strategic allies, especially Japan and the U.S., and enhancing Taiwan's status politically, economically, and uh, strategically. As part of this strategy, President Ma resumed a consistent and a constructive dialogue with the mainland based on our three no's policy. That is, no unification, no independence, and no use of force. And the earlier 1992 consensus of a one China respective interpretations through our government's calm and prudent stewardship, the Taiwan Strait has been transformed from major flashpoint into conduit for regional peace and prosperity. Today, tensions between Taiwan and the mainland are at their lowest point in decades. Nearly three million people from Taiwan and mainland China travel across the street each year. More than 5,600 mainland students studied in Taiwan's university in year 2010. And 70,000 Taiwanese companies are investing more than $100 billion on the mainland, with an unofficial estimate putting it as high as $200 billion U.S. dollars. There are now nearly 600 direct flights a week between Taiwan and mainland China, compared against only dozens when President Ma took office. The two sides have now reached 16 agreements, including the Historical Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement, or we call it ECFA, or you call it FTA, which took effect last year. The ECFA will grow Taiwan's economy by 4.4%, but its value in opening doors for future trade agreements with other Asian nations is immeasurable. Taiwan today is more plugged into the global economy than ever, pursuing ongoing economic partnership agreement talks with Singapore, signing an investment agreement with Japan, and exploring new trade agreements with New Zealand, India, Indonesia, and other countries. Uh, President Ma's re-election is a testament, testament to the success of this strategy, which has significantly reduced cross-strait tensions. In the foreseeable future, Taiwan's cross-strait policy will continue the ongoing successful approach that promotes greater cooperation in economic areas. While putting aside the more challenging matters such as political negotiations, in the near term, Taiwan will focus on signing an investment protection agreement and strengthening the implementation of ACFA as well as resolving other trade issues with mainland China. Over the last hundred years, the destinies of the United States and ROC become intertwined as the two countries work together to defend freedom and democracy. While the approach of our previous administration made this collaboration difficult, mutual trust and high-level communication
between Taiwan and the U.S. was restored by President Ma's low-key, no-surprises approach to our bilateral relationship. In the last several years, we've been enormous progress in regaining mutual trust. Now, high-level dialogues between Taiwan and the U.S. have increasingly markedly with the several prominent exchange of senior delegations between our two countries. Today, we confront shared global challenges such as terrorism, nuclear proliferation, human and drug trafficking, and natural disasters. As President Ronald Reagan once said, quote, peace is made by the fact of strength and peace is lost when such strength disappears." End quote. Indeed, Taiwan's work toward the peaceful res resolution of cross-strait differences would not have been possible and will not be su sustainable without America's enduring commitment to Taiwan's security. In September of last year, the U.S. administration approved a retrofitting package to upgrade Taiwan's fleet of F-16A-B serious fighter jets. This important announcement brought U.S. weapon sales to Taiwan to over 18 billion U.S. dollars over the past three plus years, the highest in decades. U.S. arms sales have not only further strengthened our people's sense of security, but have also provided us with the needed confidence to further improve our relations with many China. I emphasize confidence. Last year, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia and the Pacific Affairs, Kurt Campbell, appeared at a hearing held by the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee entitled Why Taiwan Matters. During that hearing, he publicly restated that the Taiwan Relations Act of 1979 and the six assurances offered by President Ronald Reagan in 1982 continue to serve as the basis for relations between Taiwan and the United States. We are grateful that the U.S. administration has reconfirmed its commitment to honor the assurance not to conduct prior consultations with the PRC on U.S. arms sales to Taiwan. But our cooperation extends far beyond contour of global security. On the economic front, Taiwan is currently America's 10th largest good trading partner and 15th largest good export market. We are also the sixth largest market for U.S. agricultural products. Last year alone, a delegation from Taiwan signed letters of intent to purchase U.S. agricultural products worth more than Five billion U.S. dollars. While much of the world continues to struggle to regain the momentum lost from the global financial crisis, Taiwan is racing ahead. Our unemployment rate of 4.48 percent is considerably lower than that of the U.S. and Japan, and has been gradually decreasing for the last. 19 months. Our currency is stable, our economy predictable, and our business transactions protected by a transparent and durable legal architecture. Keeping pace with our global economic role, Taiwan's diplomatic activities have ensured that our voice is heard in international organizations where the mainland often enjoys significant influence. Can you imagine a world where the U.S. was not a member 
of the United Nations, where your diplomats cannot speak up at the global forums to advance action on climate change or fair and equitable labor laws or human rights, where every time you try to contribute to global efforts to com combat terrorism or make our skies safer for airlines, you are blocked from participating in these global discussions. That is the political reality Taiwan is facing. Every day, we need to fight to be seen and to be heard. Thanks to our friends in the US and around the world, that the reality is changing. Taiwan has partic participated in the annual World Health Assembly as an observer since year 2009. And we are building on this president to create similar arrangement in a range of other international bodies, such as the International Civil Aviation Organization and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the International Atomic Energy Agency. Our government is very appreciative of your government's continued effort to advocate for Taiwan's increased participation in this international community. We are especially grateful for the remarks by your Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sibles, that, quote, no organization of the UN has a right to unilaterally determine the position of Taiwan, unquote. On the humanitarian front, Taiwan joined the U.S. in providing significant donations to the countries devastated by tsunami in year 2004. To Haiti in the aftermath of its year 2010 earthquake, and to Japan in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear disaster, as Japan struggled to cope with its worst natural disaster in recent memory. Taiwan also joined with the U.S. to evacuate over 100 Americans who were strand stranded. That is the meaning of friendship between nations. People-to-people -people exchanges are another significant area of progress in Taiwan-U.S. relations. And in particular, those involving students from our two countries. Nearly 25,000 students from Taiwan are currently studying in the United States. And some are lucky enough to be spending a year or more on this beautiful and stimulating campus. But we need to take this already close political and economic relationship to the next level. This is where your come help can help as the future diplomats, academics, and business leaders of our two countries. Your energy and your vision will ensure another generation of close ties between the U.S. and Taiwan, but not without effort by all of us today. And this begins with the two critical achievements that are on the immediate horizon, the resumption of talks under the Bilateral Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, and the addition of Taiwan's to the U.S. Visa Waiver Program. In recent years, Trade and Investment Framework Agreement talks between Taiwan and the U.S. have been suspended. Since differences on trade matters are not unusual among uh, allies, we do hope the TIFA talks will be resumed as soon as possible in a way that significantly benefits both countries in expanded trade and investments. More than 410,000 Taiwanese tourists visited the U.S. last year. While we are proud of the high numbers of our citizens come to the U.S., we recognize that this number could skyrocket if the costly hurdle of obt obtaining a visa was removed. After 
concerted effort to meet the legal requirements needed for joining the U.S. visa waiver program. The U.S. announced the nomination of Taiwan as a VWP candidate in December year 2011. If things moved forward smoothly, it is expected that Taiwan will become the number 37th country participating in the VWP by the end of this year, a move that would further promote bilateral tourism, trade, and investment. Ladies and gentlemen, Taiwan and the United States both share the core value of freedom, democracy, human rights, and market economy. During a speech at APEC meeting in Honolulu, Hawaii, in November of last year, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton emphasized the importance of the security and economic partnership between our two countries. Similarly, President Ma, in his post-election victory speech, clearly declared that his second term's top foreign policy priority would be to strengthening relations with the United States. Recent announcements by President Obama and Secretary Clinton that U.S. foreign policy would pivot toward Asia was welcome in Taiwan, Taipei, and other capitals across the Asian Pacific region. As the U.S. pursue this shift toward Asia, Taiwan will remain a proud and ready partner in promoting regional stability and cooperation. As its core, this means that President Ma will continue to make every effort to alleviate cross-strait tensions. The government has worked to replace conflict with reconciliation and has em emphasized negotiations as a means to resolve differences in order to create a virtuous cycle for Taiwan in its international relations in the future. Taiwan will continue to play the role of a peacemaker in the region by embracing these principles. Before I conclude, I want to share one final thought. Everybody knows I'm a Laker fan. <laughs> May not be the Knicks fan, but please rest assured that Taiwan's diplomatic corps is hard at work to make sure that Americans continue to enjoy the sanity. <laughs> in all seriousness, the people of Taiwan feel great pride in Jeremy Lin's recent achievements. He's the best possible cultural ambassador between our two countries. The story of his grandmother, Lin Zhu Amian, who came to the United States to babysit him while his parents worked, is both a Taiwanese story of self-sacrifice -sac and an American story of immigrants building a better life for their children in the land of opportunity. Although we regret that his poor grandmother is now followed around by the Taiwanese paparazzi, <laughs> we hope that the German Lin's uh, Liu Fang celebrity will last long into the future. Whether on the basketball court, in corporate boardrooms, in the Oval Office, or in the halls of Congress, U.S. Taiwan relations are strong. As we enter the dawn of a President Ma's second term, Taiwan looks forward to building on our two nations' history of mutual trust and shared vision. Thank you very much.